Hi all and welcome back to Scala Collections. One of the most popular algorithm in today's world is MapReduce algorithm. You might have heard about Hadoop and Spark processing engines. The engines internally use MapReduce algorithms to process huge streams of data. We have already learned about Map, FlatMap and Filter in our previous videos. Now it is time to learn reduce. This video is the first part on fold and reduce syntax. I might have sounded that we are going to crack the whole of Hadoop and Spark in this video. Well, there are a lot of other things that goes on on top of map reduce algorithm. But yes, this video may help you to grasp on how map reduce algorithms work. So without wasting much time, let us start with reduce operations in Scala. In today's video, I'm going to talk about fold left. This is a higher order function and help to evaluate a list. Fundamentally, this function works on the neighboring elements of the list to produce a new result which is then again compared with the next element of the list. If that sounds confusing, don't worry. We'll explore them in detail. Let me quickly move on to Scala shell for some quick demos. Let us say we want to find out sum of a list. One of the way to find sum is to use recursion. Let me quickly code a operation method here. The method would take in a list of integers and a result parameter to achieve tail recursion. And finally, it would return us an int. I will pattern match on the list. So if list is empty, I'll return result. Else, I'll take the first value from the list and add it to result. Let us test operation with some range of integers and initial value of zero. I'll declare a val list that has integers from one until six. And as expected, the result is 15. Now, what if we want to generalize our recursion function to find out the product? So let us modify our operation once again so this time, our method operation will also accept a function. This function would take in two integer and operates on them to return a result, which is an integer again. Again, I will pattern match on the list. If list is nil, will return nil, will return the result. Else, will perform operation overhead and result of the list. Next, I'll declare two functions. First is sum that would add two integers. And second is product that would multiply two integers. Now, let us test our operation method once again. First, we'll try to find sum of first five integers. So I'll provide a list of integers and then function sum. And finally, our result value, which is zero. And as expected, our result is 15. Similarly, let us quickly test product as well. But this time, our result value is going to be 1. And the result is 120. Before we move on, another thing to notice here is that while calculating sum, if I provide the initial value of result as 20, then operation would return us 35. So we have seen that how Scala is acting on element by element 
to produce the result. Here is a small animation on how Scala has deduced the sum of elements in the list provided. Below is our result that is added to the head of the list to form a new result. Now, I don't want to write this recursion every time. And indeed, no surprises, Scala can do this for us. We would use fold left to achieve the same result. Here is the syntax of fold left. Initial result is the first value of result that we have provided in our recursion function. That was 0, 1 or 20. Then result would accumulate the results of all function operation on head and result itself. And finally, head is the head of the list. Let us try all those previous operations once again using fold left. So the first one is to find sum of first five integers. Here our initial value is 0 and the function was sum. And as expected, the sum is 15. However, if we change the initial value to 20, then our result would be 35. If you think about our example again, sum is a kind of thing that we do not have to declare a separate function literal for it. I could have returned my function literal in line to fold left. And here we go. Or even better, Scala only need to know what function you want to perform and it can name the valves on its own. And here is, a, here is a small sample that how Scala can perform addition. You can try out various functions with fold left. For example, max, min, average, etc. Think about anything where you want a final result out of a list. Let us have a look at another example. Consider salaries provided by the companies. There are many components to a salary, namely base salary, income tax, insurance, and benefits. Let us try to code a final salary calculator. I'll declare a salary component class that would instantiate various deductions and benefits of a salary. Each salary component must tell you two things. First, the type of component, whether it's a benefit or a deduction. And second, is by how much percentage. Now, let us declare these components one by one. First one is house rent allowance, which is a benefit of 40% of base salary. Next is medical allowance, a benefit of 5%. And now let us add some deductions. So the first one is pension, which is 3% of the salary. And finally, an income tax, an overall tax that is 20% of the salary. Let us add all these components in the component list. Now let's move on to Scala shell. Let us calculate a salary of employee who has base salary of 15,000 upon which all these components are applied. I will first declare our base component as 15,000 of type double. We'll pass our base salary as the starting point of the calculation. Next, we'll start with our fold left body, where we are going to have two well. First is calculated salary and next is salary component. 
we will match component type. If component type is benefit, would add the component to the salary. And if the component type is deduction, then we'll subtract it from the salary. Let us hit enter and execute the block. And our final salary is 17,110. All right, folks, so that was all about fold left. I hope now you understand how fold left works to reduce a list to final result. I would suggest you guys to spend some more time to try different functions on fold left. The more you practice, the more you get to know about the function. This is the first part of fold reduce function. In next video, we'll explore other functions like fold right, reduce left, and reduce right. Until then, keep practicing Sakala. See you guys. Thanks for watching. Please post your comments and suggestions.